Hi guys, welcome once again to Otto's Garage. Cheers for watching, hope you enjoy this one. Okay, so the rear suspension arms on the Lance here are a little bit lightweight. Uh, one of them's actually a folded piece of steel. Uh, the other one's an adjustable um, tube, but again, both quite lightweight. So I've looked at those and I think we're going to remake those in a bit of tube with a rose joint on each end. So the original one, I've got one here, is basically um, a little bit like the track control arm that you get on the front, but it basically is doing the same sort of job on the back, but obviously we haven't got any steering on the back. Uh, the long bolt goes right the way through the back diff carrier and holds that so you get an arm on each side of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, have a look at this and see whether we can't fabricate this with a rose joint and a piece of decent steel in there as well. So let's have a look and see how we go. So this is the original arm. Uh, I've just dropped two of the long bolts through. These are diff carry bolts. This is just so we can give ourselves a little bit of setting out basically. So that original arm hasn't been adjusted at all, it's as it was when it came off the car. Um, but obviously when we put rose joints on it we are going to get a bit of adjustment as the original model has got as well. But each end of the rose joint basically goes into a threaded insert. So the threaded insert can be welded into a piece of tube. Um, what you have to make sure is that you get a, uh, a left hand thread at one end and then on the corresponding opposite end you get a right hand thread. So all you need to do is just twizzle the tube in between the two and one end will go out and the other end will go out or turn it the other way and they'll both come in. So that's how you adjust your, your track basically to get the toe in toe out. So what I need to do now is just make sure that the dimension that we've got between the two inserts uh, is correct for the tube and then I'll cut a length of that off. Um, these are 19mm outer diameter and the tube is a 19mm inner diameter with a 3mm wall. So it's quite hefty stuff, it's cold drawn steel, seamless, um, so it's proper stuff and uh, we've got a good weld on the end of it then basically uh, it's going to be much stronger than the original uh, Lancia item. Well, there's the tube, uh, and there are the inserts, so we just tidied the ends of those up. Uh, we're going to have to put those into the end of the tube now, it's quite a tight fit, so probably going to have to give that a little bit of gentle persuasion with a soft mallet on that. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll put that together just to double check that all the length is correct, um, using the original arm as a jig basically with the 10mm box coming all the way through it. So we'll get that assembled and we'll have a look and see what she looks like. And here it is, that's the um, finished product. So basically you've got a left hand thread and a right hand thread. So when we twizzle the middle bit afterwards, it's gonna expand and contract the overall length of it. Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is weld the insert in. So where we've got this step here, this is gonna be our weld point and the same with the other end. Uh, obviously what I'm going to do is take off the rose joint and the locking nut to take them off. Um, and a, a top tip somebody gave me was if we put some uh, aluminium foil in the hole, that will basically keep from any weld spatter from going in there. And of course um, it won't, uh, you know, because it's aluminium, it'll just basically take the heat away from that area anyway. So it, uh, it won't um, get damaged. But that's the theory behind it. We'll give it a go and we'll see how it looks. Right, we've got our um, air dryer system here that I've installed. So basically, we've got a standard workshop compressor. Uh, there's an airline coming off that, which goes onto the copper tube system. And the idea of the principle is that basically as the warm damp air is going through these cold pipes, um, the water in there will condensate. Um, and what I've done is I've set it in such a way that at the lowest point there is a, um, a water trap with a blower valve on the end of that. So basically any moisture that accumulates in the first loop will drop down, go into that, and then it tees off here and goes up hill basically so as it's going uphill it's going cooler and cooler all the time 
condensation that will form inside the pipes will basically run back downhill and go back down to the water trap at the bottom. Um, and then the drier air will make its way across and then go down into the regulators. Uh, I've got two regulators on there. The top one is basically unoiled, so that's going to feed the air line for the um, spray gun, uh, where we don't, obviously don't want any oil contamination in that line. And then the lower one is, uh, that's got a oil um, feed on it after the regulator. And that basically is going to an airline which will feed things like the um, air guns and stuff like that that you need for the workshop tools generally. Um, I've also got an extra trap at the bottom there. So any, any condensation which does make it over to the top is going to drop down there and will accumulate in this lower one here. So I've got these two blow off valves on the bottom. So at the end of the day, when we shut the compressor off, we can just open those two up. That'll clear the any moisture that comes out of there. Um, I have noticed prior to using this system, when we were just running the um, sander, the DA sander straight off the compressor, we were finding we were getting moisture coming out of that as we were using it. I've been using that for probably about two hours tonight and um, Good news is we haven't had any drips or anything like that. So that is a fairly straightforward system, which you should really have in your workshop if you've got any kind of air compressor going on and you want to have some dry air. Much cheaper than buying a uh, factory unit, certainly. Uh, and it took maybe a couple of nights work just to install it. So uh, but I'm really pleased that it works great. So good stuff. Try it yourself. Okay, so we'll just have a look at those now and just see what we've got. So basically we've got the welded insert into the um, cold drawn steel tube. Um, it's got a lock nut on the end of it and then you've got basically your left hand thread one end and your right hand thread the other end. I'm not going to leave these in overnight because at the moment that is uh, still a little bit warm and what I don't want it to do is to seize onto the rose joints at each end. But to give you an idea, rose joints um, I think they were about five pound a piece, and they came with a lock nut. That was a left and a right thread. Uh, the insert was again about a five pound. Uh, that was for a pair of them. So what are we looking at? Five, ten, fifteen quid. And the tube itself, uh, I got two lengths of that um, for forty-five pounds, basically. So you're looking at something in the region of what sixty quid to make one of those. Uh, and I think they're being sold for around about for a set of four around about 400 quid something like that so if you have got a bit of wherewithal on it you can save a lot of money and you can do it yourself but um, if anyone is interested in those then uh, let me know and uh, I'll be only too happy to uh, give you a price for making some up. I'm going to powder coat these afterwards so I'll take the ends out drop them off to my powder coat guy and basically um, that means we haven't got any problems with messing around with paint or anything like that so that's pretty good and uh, I'll show you the powder coat finish when that's done. Okay, it's another day. Um, we've had them back from the powder coaters. Uh, I'll tell you what, I think they look absolutely awesome. But you just uh, see what you think yourself. So I've had them done in red um, and uh, yeah, they have come out very, very well. Uh, on the ends here where they were welded, we've just done a bit of work and just ground it back. So there's a nice rounded over end on the end of that. Um, the only thing that I think I would possibly do in the future is uh, I'd incorporate a position where you can put a, a wrench onto the actual bar itself rather than just onto the lock nut because at the moment obviously to tighten that up um, it's going to have to have a, a, a grip or something put onto there and then that would have to mean something protective to stop damaging the power grip. So really it wants a welded knot on the end of the insert uh, in that zone or some kind of machine gun so you can get a, um, a wrench or something on the end of there to grab it. But um, yeah, very impressed with those and I did a quick calculation on that and they're actually working out at £50 a bar to make so that's even better value. Of course, if I was selling them, mm -hmm, that would be a different story altogether, <laughs> but never mind. Anyway, so um, yeah, we'll make another two of those up and then we can have a look. But, that's pretty cool, so I'm well impressed with how that's gone. Okay guys, thanks for watching Otto's Garage once again. Keep the comments coming through, there's more videos to come. I've got some nice stuff on order for the um, Prisma, uh, and I'll show you some of that in the very near future. See you soon.